That's right, motherfuckers! We're finally cutting the crap and delving into a staple of the anime fandom. You know it, you love it, you can't live without it! It's Tenchi Muyo. One of the linchpins that held the original Adult Swim anime block together, Tenchi Muyo is as classic a cult anime series as you can find. Not so oversaturated that it becomes annoying like Naruto or One Piece, but not so obscure that you couldn't find a fellow fan to talk about it with. It's attained a happy medium to this day, and the community is richer because of it. And I'm not that big a fan. What I mean is, I don't not like it, and I certainly find most of the characters entertaining and memorable, but it's just not really my kind of series. I can appreciate it for what it is, but I've never gone out of my way to collect the manga or any of the series on DVD. I became a casual fan by watching the unedited episodes on Adult Swim, keyword here being casual. In fact, during my Demon City Shinjuku review, I almost called him Tenchi Muyo instead of Tenchi Masaki. For those of you who don't know, Tenchi Muyo translates out to useless Tenchi or no need for Tenchi. And it relates to how the main character, Tenchi Masaki, is kind of unimportant. At least that's what the joke is supposed to be. I don't know. I guess I just feel like I shouldn't be attached to a series that admits that its main character isn't all that important. But I guess that's just... Hold it, pencil dick! M Mars Girl? That's right, Lunchbox! When's this I hear about you dissing Tenchi? Lunchbox? Have you been talking to Mark? Answer me! Alright! Okay, I'm sorry, I just don't like the show. It's just not my kind of series, alright? Sheesh, I'm sorry, I'm not a super fan like you. A super fan? <laughs> Sage, super fans get Tenchi tattooed on their arms. I have Tenchi tattooed on the back of my eyelids, so at all times, they're is Tenchi. Didn't that hurt? Yes! Okay, far be it for me to insult your obsession, but I assure you that whatever I say about Tenchi Muyo and love, I will be- Wait, are you talking about the first movie? Yeah, I mean, it's Tenchi, Valentine's Day, you know, felt it would fit a theme. Oh! Carry on, then. Wait. You're not mad anymore? Oh, no. I thought you were going to review Daughter of Darkness. Nah, I wouldn't do it now. Now? Ever! Good. Good. Uh, uh. Does anybody remember the blue-haired Mars girl? She was nice. Certainly less anger rapey. Okay guys, crash course on Tenchi Muyo to get everybody on the same page. I'd let the movie do it, but it couldn't have been bothered. The series revolves around Tenchi Masaki, a teenager who finds out that he is in line of a galactic royal family called the Jirai. His status has attracted several women, all of whom are technically aliens, but all look mostly human because fanservice. They are as follows. Ryoko, a space pirate, Ayaka, a Jiraiian princess and her little sister Sasami, Washu, a brilliant scientist and personally my favorite character, and Mahoshi and Kione, two officers of the Galaxy Police. All these girls want Tenchi in varying degrees of severity, from the girly crush of Sasami to the cock-hungry Ryoko. Although certainly not the first series to be labeled harem anime, it is often cited as one of the earlier examples of the subgenre. I mean, as far as the harem setup goes, I think Tenchi Muyo does it best. And I'm still not a fan. There's something weirdly admirable about that. We begin the story proper with Tenchi showing the girl some old home movies of his mother. Apparently his father must have been Sam Raimi because this footage looks like it was shot with a steady cam. I could barely work the aperture on my camera and he could pull off shots like that with a Super 8? Bullshit! Of course, you've got to remember, Sasami, that Tenchi's mother is descended from the Emperor Jirai. Hey, that's weird. I thought you said you have Jirai blood too, didn't you? Uh-huh, what about it? What the? Hey, can't you take a joke? Give me some cookies! They're too good to waste on you! Was that the movie trying to sweep the fact that Ayaka and Tenchi are related under the rug? <sighs> nice try, movie, but I can smell incest a mile away. That's why I can't go within 200 miles of Alabama. 
But something goes horribly awry and his mother disappears from the film with Tenchi not lagging far behind. But in comes Washu to save Tenchi and explain what's going on. What are you doing up there? Well, 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 I can see once again I made it just in time. The problem's in the past. <gasps> <gasps> time? I can't go back there. Yep, it's a time travel movie. Because those never have plot holes. So, it, it turns out that something dreadful has happened to Tenchi's mother in the past, and now Tenchi doesn't exist anymore in this timeline, but if that's true, then how come Tenchi is in yesterday's news? For now, the shield I've put around Lord Tenchi is protecting him from the shift, and so you are all protected. But there's no way I can keep the time shield up indefinitely. And when it finally collapses, he will disappear. So... Wait, Washu has the technology to save Tenchi from being erased by history. Does this mean this has happened before? I mean, if it didn't happen before, why would she think to have it? Oh, wait, wait, if it did happen before, how would anyone know? <sighs> Always be prepared. The credo of the Boy Scouts, insane geniuses, and barren praxis. Oh, and by the way, we won't be able to continue on until we get this little reference out of the way. Tell me, Washu, what is it? Well, to start with, you're going to have to travel back in time 26 years, and then our task is quite simple. Make sure nothing happens to Tenchi's mother. There, can we move on? Thank you. Not 15 minutes into this movie and already I'm punching more holes into the plot than Tim Hortons punches holes in donuts. So if Washu had to race just in time to protect everyone from disappearing in this new timeline, surrounding them in some vaguely scientific field that does just that, why are Kione and Mahoshi around? They weren't in that protective field with the rest of the girls. Also, if this is a new timeline where none of them would be on Earth, where does Washu's time machine come from? Did she just put a protective seal around this too? All right, I swear I'll stop at the plot hole rant for now. Even though I only need two more to get my pedantic asshole merit badge. Happy? So the six of them, minus Washu, travel back into the past to protect Tenchi's mom from whatever is going to offer. And they do by enrolling themselves as students and teachers in her class. And how are they able to- <coughs> <coughs> Give me all your clothes. There's no way. Take them off. Right now. Come on. <laughs> hey, hey, stop that, both of you. Stop. Let her go. Thank God. Out of context cat fight. What can't you cure? The girls keep a close eye on Tenchi's mother, Achika, waiting for the exact moment when the thing that's supposed to kill her appears. Which means while the characters are waiting around for something to happen, so is the audience. The movie is around an hour and a half, and that's thanks in part to scenes like this. Is dinner ready yet? Huh? It's coming up right away. Why don't you help out instead of complaining? Huh, you should talk. I don't see you doing anything. How dare you speak to no. me that way? Please don't fight. If I had to guess, I'd estimate that 25% of the movie is just this. Ryoko and Ayaka sniping at each other. I know that's a big part of the series normally, but here it's just treated as padding. In fact, the very first crucial plot point that occurs doesn't happen until 30 minutes into the film. And it's just a false scare. Yup, Tenchi starts to disappear, everyone thinks that his mother is under attack, and it turns out she's just flirting with Tenchi's dead-to-be. And Tenchi turns out alright. I'm... I just... I'm not trying to hate this movie. But it's not a movie! It's a 90 minute long episode of Tenchi! And you know what? That would've been fine too! If something would just fucking happen! Well, my wish sort of comes true as Washu brings back Kione to the present to tell her some new information. That before everything went all haywire, a criminal called Kane escaped his prison and blew up the Galactic Police headquarters. 
Characteristic energy form classified as NVO, code name Kane, wanted for destruction of planets, suspicion of murder. And outstanding parking violations. Actually, how did Kane escape his prison? No, seriously, his prison is shown, and then it shows him just escaping. What, did someone spill his coffee on the control panel? How the hell did he escape? Not an ordinary criminal, is he? He's more like a brand new supernova. But even if he escaped the subspace room, how could he go back in time 26 years and interfere with events there? Hmm, take my word for it. If Kane managed to get out of subspace, then he could easily influence the passage of time, couldn't he? Oh, I see. He was able to escape his prison for the same reason he was able to travel back in time. Because... Well, at least this plot hole has nothing to do with time travel. Just incompetence. Now that they have a name, they soon figure out a place, and that Kane will appear somewhere in Tokyo, just at the same time that Achika and her class are going on a field trip there. What's more, during their field trip, Ryoko spies a man who she feels has been stalking them for the past few days. Oh my, the Galaxy Police. You with Kioni and Mihoshi? <laughs> You seem to be getting along well with those detectives first class. Me, I'm a special operative. I'm with the Galaxy Police dealing with serious criminals. The energy of the Class A criminal Kane has drawn me back here to this era. And this allowed you to travel through time how? No, really, it's never explained how this guy got here. He was led here? That's it? All this character does is tell Ryoko what Kane is and misdirect the audience. Did we really need this character to tell the audience that Kane is just traveling back in time to kill Tenchi's mom so that the bloodline is cut off? Didn't we already establish that with the little conversation with Washu and Kione? Fuck this red herring bullshit right in the neck. Did I mention Mahoshi was my least favorite character? Do you need to ask why? So Washu sends back in time some much needed equipment, now that they have an idea what's going to attack Achika, as well as where it will happen. Okay, listen up troops, I've got some good news. I've taken all of this into account, I'm sending you some important equipment. My Psylink analyzer is designed to amplify the psi wave activity of trees and connect- Wait, the wait, 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 wait. The psi wave activity of trees? You're not serious, are you? Jiraiya technology is bullshit! And speaking of bullshit, Tenchi goes into another spasm where it seems like he's disappearing, but somehow doesn't. I got the shield! I can handle this! Did Tenchi just will himself back into existence? What is he, an eldritch horror? Are you telling me that all Marnie McFly had to do was focus extra super hard on not being nothing? Alright, I get that it's badass, but how does this even work? Did Tenchi wish upon a star? Did he sacrifice a goat so he has another five minutes in this realm? Or is this another case of Jiraiya technology, hell, the Jiraiyans period, being BULLSHIT! God, I gotta get the let out. I don't have the time for this. Plus, I'm running out of fingers. So, uh, more sniping from Ayeka and Ryoko, Mahoshi acting like a bubble-headed idiot, that useless agent from the Galactic Police, and I think I have a pulse. Nope. False alarm. Oh look! Something happening for once! Kane arrives just in time to give this movie an actual conflict, spawning Tenchi and his mom just before he unceremoniously kills the useless agent with all the weight and suspense of a school assembly. How pitiful that your skill as an operative has helped seal your fate. No one can withstand the power of Kane.
failing to kill your sworn enemy and dying a slow, creeping, painful death. Nah, that's too dignified for this character. Kane does away with the nuisance and resumes his attack on Achika, but Tenshi and company have managed to align Washu's technology to open up subspace and suck Kane back into the prison from whence he came. Unfortunately, Kane's a sore loser and drags both Tenshi's mom and dad into the void with him. Father! Mother! Ryoko! Stop it! Ryoko! Let go! Tenshi. I've got to help them! Tenshi! It's too late! They've already been pulled in. Let me go to them! They need my help! Mother! Huh. That was kind of an unexpected turn. Can't wait to see the bullshit they'll pull out for this. Washu, isn't there something we can do to bring my mother and father back? Tell me, please. I'm afraid not, Tenchi. It's nearly impossible to determine the exact coordinates inside subspace, so we have no access. No access? There... They're actually following through? They're taking the high road here and being the mature storytellers that PSYCH! Ha <laughs> ha! They pushed out harder than Joss Whedon in the Avengers! Well, it's a long shot, but we can try to transfer Attica's brainwaves into Tenchi. Then Ryoko can teleport to those coordinates and you can follow. Yeah. Because that is totally possible and makes hella sense. But I have a feeling you're holding back here, movie. Come on. I know you want to unleash the dragon. Hit me with your best shot. I'll give you a free shot right here. Come on. It's risky, but I'll use the dimensional cannon. What do you mean the dimensional cannon? Now wait just a minute, Miss Washu. You wouldn't even use that cannon to blow up a whole planet. It's for taking out a small galaxy. We have to consider who our opponent is. If we don't destroy him right now, there's no telling when he'll find his way out of alternate space time again. That's it! I knew you had it in you, movie! A galaxy destroying gun that Washu has for some reason and makes no mention of it before or afterwards. Washu has a galaxy destroying super weapon. And she's just been sitting on it all this time? You have the fucking history eraser button, the veritable Armageddon spell, and she's just storing it away for a rainy day? Well, I guess there wasn't any other credible threats that they faced later, except for this dick and these bitches. But aside from that, count your lucky stars that I don't have a galaxy destroying cannon, because if I did, you wouldn't be watching me on the internet. You would be watching me on the Jumbotron in the Superdome proclaiming me King Shit of Dick Mountain! Why would you fuck with someone who could destroy the galaxy? So, Ryoko, Ayaka, and Tenchi managed to bamf onto the scene just in time to save Achika and Tenchi's father. Achika manages to piece together that Tenchi is her future son and unlocks her own Jiraiyan powers in the process, which comes in handy when Tenchi is his, well, useless self. Achika stabs Kane, the god gun does the rest, and Achika's mind is conveniently wiped to prevent any kind of time paradox. Though the 10,000 or so people that witnessed the entire fight around Tokyo Tower doesn't matter, I guess. The Tokyo Tower is a wreck. Is it going to be all right? Washu told me that the authorities will probably chalk the whole thing up as an unexplained event. Oh, they're gonna blame it on unexplained events, are they? You know, it's because of shit like this that people think that we faked the moon landing. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. This movie has bullshit coming out its ears and more plot holes than Larry King has ex-wives. And despite all that, it's not horrible. Not good, but at the very least, it's not the worst film based off an anime series I know. Hint, hint. Still, why is this movie called Tenchi Muyo in Love? This really doesn't involve Tenchi in love. Or romance, for that matter. Shit. I think I shot myself in the foot when it comes to Valentine's Day. <sighs> Whatever. The year is still new, and with it comes some new rules here on Anime Abandon. No longer is the cutoff date 2002. With 2013 upon us, 
2003 is the new cutoff date. And when 2014 rolls around, 2004 titles will be welcomed here on the show. So with this new rule in mind, let us take this opportunity and welcome... La Pena! Again! Transfix your attention onto me and only me. The first declaration, there shall be no more use of the word lesbian. The term is archaic and it has no place here in this new land of Benetopia. Besides, there is no such things as lesbians, just women who have yet to feel the touch of sage. But that term will be extinct too, I assure you. Second declaration, all male children from henceforth will be called sage. At some point there will be nothing but sage, sage everywhere, all the time. I assure you that the confusion that you think this will cause will be remedied, just unsure of how that will be remedied at this point. I have top minds working on it as we speak. Declaration number three. I like cupcakes sent to my office. Now. No, no, not when this broadcast ends. Now. Galaxy destroying cannon. Got the button right just right here. I don't think I won't fire it. You don't think I'll fire it for not getting cupcakes? You're really gonna let the galaxy be destroyed over cupcakes. Who's the petty one, really? <laughs> 